Connect. Thank you. Can't hear anything. General. Hmm. Audio is not there yet. I think when you share, there will be an uh, icon on the left side. It says uh, share sound. Yeah. 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 Uh, all you need to do is to unmute yourself. Then it will take up the voice of the video.
Um, am I audible? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Sudanshu. Yeah, try to read. Okay. Um, so, uh, welcome to everyone for this series of talk. Uh, today we have uh, Himanshu Agrawal, who will uh, speak about his effort in the way he is changing the education system. And I got to know Himanshu. Uh, about an year ago or probably more. And uh, the one thing that comes to my mind is uh, the poem written by Robert Frost when he said uh, in the poem, the road, the road not taken, there is a sentence which says, two roads diverged in wood and I took the one less travel and that made all the difference. Perhaps that makes uh, more sense in the context of Himanshu and the and the path that he had taken and the impact that he's making in the society today. So with that, I will introduce uh, Himanshu Agrawal, uh, who is our own alumni, uh, alumnus. He did his BTEC in electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur in the year 2000. Uh, and he had a minor in computer science. He also received a certificate of merit for his uh, academic excellence. He had 20 plus years of corporate and startup experience working with companies such as Synopsys and Mirafra Technologies. But in 2016, he, he followed, he, he decided to follow his passion and he started Schoogling, which is focusing on upliftment of rural education in India. It's a fairly new company. However, the kind of model that they have chosen, which he is going to talk about, has a very transformative effect on us. And uh, with that, I will invite Himanshu to share his experience and uh, tell us, uh, or rather educate us on what the future of India is going to be uh, in the coming few years. Um, Himanshu, over to you. <clears throat> Thank you, Shikhar, sir. 
Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm assuming there's a lot of uh, IIT folks and uh, people on the call. Uh, I'm people on the call. I see uh, Rita Ma'am is there and Sir is also there. I will invite Himanshu to share his experience and uh, tell us. Uh... Okay. Um, so it's it's interesting to interface with all of you. Um, it's been an interesting journey for me. Um, I will try to combine the talk a little bit with what we are doing uh, and then also some of the interesting stories that I have been a part of in the last five years and then open it up to each of you if you have any specific questions. <clears throat> By a show of hands, if I could quickly see uh, how many of you are uh, current students at IIT. Uh, if you could just raise a hand on your Zoom, if you're familiar with that. Um, so easiest way to get a quick uh, poll on the audience because <clears throat> we are joining from so many remote locations. All right. Um, Thank you. Uh, you may lower your hands. Uh, do we have a uh, folks from uh, Unnat Bharat Abhiyan Mission uh, beyond IIT Kanpur? Uh, if you may raise your hands. Uh, people who raised their hands earlier could uh, lower them. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, are there any specific parts of the journey that you guys would want to hear about? Because this is <clears throat> also a startup journey uh, and we are hearing a lot of unicorns happening in India every day. And no, we are not yet a unicorn. Uh, we are still on the path. Um, and then of course there's rural India, uh, educating rural India itself. And then what Googling is doing and then me, all right. Okay, so I'll make it a conversation as well as a few slides. If you have a background about me, Shikar sir shared that with you. Um, why, why education and then why rural India uh, might be a question from many of you, especially the younger minds. Um, so the inspiration came from within. A kida hota hai ki kuch alag karna hai. Sure, all of you are comfortable with Hindi. Uh, if not, just let me know. So, uh, in my career, after I joined Synopsys, um, I felt that uh, you know all my batchmates were doing amazingly well. Um, some of the superstars. I was a very average student, by the way. Uh, of course, the first year I did well. I did get that merit uh, certificate. I got a brand change. People from IIT will be familiar with that BC. So, wo mara tha, dasa bhi mara tha. Uh, so I did score a 10 and that was my only 10 in my first semester. And then by the final semester, when I graduated, if you remember the gentleman who gives you your uh, final grade sheet, he was actually sad. And he actually counseled me for a couple of minutes that, uh, sure, I will continue in English. So, yeah. Um, so he actually counseled me that you started with a 10 and you went down, of course, I will not tell you where I went down to, uh, but uh, what I realized is, um, so all my batchmates were doing amazingly well at the Googles and the Amazons of the world. And somehow I did not foresee myself retiring at the age of 60 with a job. I wanted to do something different, and try different paths. I was never too excited about settling in the US. I did visit US many times as part of my corporate career. Uh, but just that feeling where you can't ask a panwala, I know where to go next. And everything is so crystal clear in the well-developed nations. Probably I miss the chaos which is there in India. Um, and so I wanted to, I was a part of the problem. I also wanted to be a part of the solution. Um, 2006 is when I went into my first startup. It was pretty early. Uh, 2006, I think at that time we only had the Flipkart of the world going around in India. No, even Flipkart happened after that, 2007, I think. Um, 
so that was an interesting experience uh, i was working with a few us and europe based clients um gave me a high uh, we were some 12 engineers from iits and rcs doing software development uh, day in day out and that's where the soft uh, the startup kida actually caught me and then i was back to the corporate world for a few years but the independence was just not there and so 2013 is when i moved out of the corporate world and till 2013 i used to speak with machines so there's no way i could have addressed such a live audience as i am doing today uh, thanks to unad bharat abhiyan mission what do i mean by that uh, so you know computers were my world i used to participate in software contests Uh, code round the clock, twenty four hours for eight hours, and <clears throat> I'll give you one example. So once I went uh, with my family to a friend's place for dinner, and after I came back, I got a huge scolding from my family. And the scolding was that you know when you go to somebody's house for eating dinner, you praise the host, oh amazing food, uh, and so on and so forth. I did nothing of that sort. so uh, i was asked why why couldn't you compliment the host why do you have to be so rigid and i lived in a binary world at the, at that time so i said see i ate paneer ki sabji right paneer you guys all understand right and i not only ate it i asked for a second helping i said give me more so what would you deduce and, and you guys are all engineers right what would you deduce out of it if i asked for the dish twice what would be the logical uh, deduction anyone you find it tasty yeah exactly i i found it tasty otherwise i would have left it in the plate so if i found and, and that that just like you figured out the host would have figured it out right um so i found uh, social conversation very alien to me uh, if i liked it i took it twice that itself is a compliment it was amazing right uh, that is how i used to be by the way but then 2013 i moved out of the corporate world i start, started traveling continents i traveled to europe finland i traveled uh, far east malaysia singapore hong kong vietnam i traveled to middle east dubai met a lot of different people from a lot of different ethnic backgrounds and that probably completed me as a person and that's when in 2016 i decided that you know i want to do some startup a quote and quote startup and a lot of you might have those aspirations which is great uh, we should definitely go on that but i didn't want to do something which is replaceable or something which is you know like a side dish something which is like a, a dessert at the end of the meal what do i mean by that right with due respect if, if i talk about tiktok which was an amazing uh, wildfire in india but one day government woke up and decided no more tiktok and the next day we all moved on and the app just disappeared from the indian play store right i didn't want to create a startup like that i wanted to create something which changed some life somewhere and in india i believe there are few problems which are large scale when we look at the demographics and i will talk about that in detail education is one health is another one agriculture is another one and employment so these are the four major sectors that i saw worth jumping into and having cleared iit je once upon a time i felt that education will be the easiest for me to solve easier said than done given the audience that i chose right um, so with that thought uh, me and my co-founder shantanu uh, we st- started scoobling no why the name scoobling itself right so school link guru gyan uh, so the g if you see in the logo is like a lamp so techno minds put together a very difficult name which is impossible to pronounce even more difficult to search on google Uh, but that's where we started and we always quoted shakespeare he said what's in a name it works and that's how we have grown um and then interesting thing happened so we and by the way when we started we were very different from what we are today uh, while we definitely wanted to cater to rural india we didn't really think of doing what we are doing today a hybrid uh, solution for the students um, we started with a with a frame of creating a social uh, platform for the entire education ecosystem but for the rural indian space one interesting thing happened which changed everything uh, again one of the it kanpur alumni is from 2001 batch pass out uh, mr kumar ravi is also an is officer uh, at that time he was the district magistrate in gaya district in bihar 
Um, and he also happens to be the wife of, uh, he also happens to be the batchmate of my wife. And she was also, she's also an IIT Kanpur alumni, by the way. Um, so just as a side note, look at the probability of success for me, right? Uh, so he invited us to Gaya district and he said, you can come down and Gaya district is like 24 blocks, 4,500 schools. It's a Naxal area. It's an aspirational district. And he said, I'll connect you with all my schools. You can visit them. I will not give you any money. I will not give you any place to stay. I will not give you any vehicles to commute. Uh, but I will tell them that you are my one year senior from IIT Kanpur and you know, people will listen to you. And of course, when this heard that I am the senior of district magistrate, they were ready to accommodate us. And then we were there for almost six months and startup bootstrapped, no money. So we borrowed a broken down van from my co-founders, uh, maternal uncle. We got it fixed. Uh, it would maximum, it would run at the speed of 50 kilometers per hour. Uh, uh, and if we ran it any faster, the, the engine could break down or the brakes wouldn't work. Um, that's where we started. And then we went school to school. We visited, we met teachers, we interfaced with students. And that's where rural India hit us. And that's where we saw education as it is. I mean, we have read about all of this. ESA report comes out every year. Uh, we read it in news articles. We discuss it on WhatsApp. And we really saw uh, the, the gap. And now today we talk about 10 and a half like government schools in India. We talk about one like schools, which are single teacher schools. Single teacher is teaching uh, all the subjects, all the grades in these one lakh schools. Uh, and there are total 15 lakh schools in India. Out of these 15 lakh schools, 85% schools are in rural India. 265 million K-12 students from kindergarten to grade 12. 90% of these students appear for state board exams. 4 lakh affordable private schools. Only 23,000 CBSC affiliated schools. Only 4,000 odd ICSC schools. Only a handful of international schools. This is the uh, India when we talk about, right? But all the solutions that are there um, are catering to this urban 15% population. There are big names that I will not name. You're all aware of that. The amazing big coaching institutes which are there spread across India uh, from Kota to Chennai. But they are all addressing that student who can afford a 2 lakh to a 5 lakh. And of course, now it's even costlier in my time. Maybe it was cheaper. Uh, kind of packages that a student needs to buy to prepare even for K-12. And then of course, competitive exams is beyond. That is the India we interfaced with. There's another dynamic that is there in the background. The, when we talk about these 10 and a half like government schools, um, the government has done an amazing job with the infrastructure, right? Midday meal scheme has been amazing. So the student dropout has really dropped. That was one good thing we saw as we visited these schools. Uh, but there are also fallouts. In order to accommodate these students, a lot of these uh, middle schools have now been, un up been upgraded to up to 10th, up to high school. They are called as Uchi Madhavik Vidyalayas. So the same school which was teaching till 8th is now teaching till 10th. Then some of these high schools have been upgraded to plus 2. Now the fall, fallout of that is, while the advantage is that the students get a continuity and they don't have to again hop school, it can happen that an 8th grade teacher is now teaching grade 10th. A uh, 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 teacher in 11th or 12th who's recruited for physics is now teaching chemistry, is teaching maths because there's a lack of teachers. Now, this is the gap that we saw. And then there's another dynamics to it, by the way. Um, since we are talking about education space in India, it so happens that the state government has only these government schools teachers as its workforce. So if you have to conduct elections, you cannot deploy the bank officials, you cannot deploy the postal officials, you can only deploy the school officials. So school teachers are deployed for the elections, panchayat elections, Lok Sabha elections, any kind of elections. Then you want to do any kind of campaigns. Uh, uh, again, the school teachers get deployed. Any kind of functions, any kind of VIP movement, school teachers get deployed. And when school teachers get deployed, the teaching in school doesn't happen because the teacher cannot be omnipresent with due respect. These are the gaps that we saw firsthand, right? Traveling school to school to school. And we interacted with the student and the students were so bright, so ambitious, um, such high energy. 
and we realize that uh, these students since they are not getting their need met in schools and by the way this is not only a fallacy of the government schools or a drawback the uh, the private schools when we talk about these geographies are equally in a bad state because all the good teachers all people like you and me we end up going to a urban <laughs> location we end up taking good paying jobs we don't stay back at our villages i am not at my village uh, where my father comes from or from where my grandparents come from we move on so the people who are left are the ones who are now teaching there so this is the gap we wanted to fill and we realize that all these students end up at you now before school and after school mom and pop tuition centers that is one second we realized is that they are not looking for supplements these are not students who are scoring 90 95 and now they want some additional uh, stuff to go from 95 to 100 they need primary content they don't want deserts they need to be taught the entire curriculum from basics a to z that's what these students are hungry for uh, because it's not being catered to where it should be so they end up with the mom and pop pop tuition centers and then we looked at this mom and pop tuition center so we visited many of these and there's a guy with a big tin shed 300 students sitting under one roof and he's teaching so it's a monologue and students are just filling seats the bright students they will get it and the rest of the students come there just because they are mandated to go to a tuition center uh, after school now if you are teaching 300 students by law of averages few students will do well and then you publicize those results and then you grow year on year on year now this is uh, and then some of them that we talked to personally some of them had like scored 45 50% in their 10th and 12th and now are teaching 10 12 students and beyond so obviously that's where the results are this is the gap that we wanted to fulfill right then there's another limitation when we talk about this 85% india so when you had doubts or when my kids have doubt they can come to me and i can answer their doubts i can google it up i can guide them and uh, and some of these things might be fresh for you right uh, avogadro's number molar mass concept uh, we have on uh, many of us have gone through those right now imagine this guy coming from the rural background the student was pretty bright but he's just stuck on avogadro's number or he is not able to balance that chemical equation can he or she go back to his parents and get that guidance and will they all his parents be able to answer that question now his parents may not be illiterate right um, they may have uh, gone through school but can they solve these problems they cannot so the reliance is on a classroom the reliance is on a teacher that's another limitation that we have to accept when we talk about india and educating india as a whole then there's another problem now today we are saying 600 to 800 million mobile users in india and pick statistics around this right who are these mobile users right and what are we expecting from a child so can i really expect my kid to take up a mobile a smartphone and be able to study calculus out of it is is it how you guys study calculus when you guys were in your uh, formative years how many of you studied calculus from a mobile phone and you were able to figure out organic chemistry from a mobile phone screen be it the best teacher Are, is that what we are expecting when we say you know go online go to youtube when everything is available there so for, that is one limitation that expecting a child to understand everything from a video lecture on a purely digital format my submission is that that is not sufficient then the penetration of the mobile phones itself and we have been unfortunately through a two waves of a pandemic and we have read articles about students going to the top of a hill to get catch a signal we are talking about signals uh, blackout zones and it is being said that only 8% of these households have a computer or a laptop with a broadband connectivity so these 800 mobile users are the smartphone users thanks to reliance jio which has done an amazing job 1.5 gb per day data pack which is the gps data pack in india today right um, and when the pandemic is not there when the earning member of the family is gone out to earn his livelihood 
does the child have access to that smart device anymore? So how do we cater to the requirements of education of these students? given all these socio-economic uh, limitations. I have personally seen students who leave their school bags at their school or at the tuition center, go home, then come back the next day and then pick up the school bag. Or they leave their books at our centers and come back the next day, Saram, we will study here only. That is the India that we're talking about. And this is the India we want to service. And of course, if education improves, automatically employment improves and thereafter. So that's, that's where we are. So with all these limitations is what we came up with a solution and we believe that the hybrid model is the best model to cater to this particular audience, this 85% audience that we are talking about. What is a hybrid model? A hybrid model is a mix of the advantages of the digital world, combining it with the advantages of the physical world, giving the child a physical classroom, giving the child a teacher in the classroom, and then beaming in the entire digital content into the classroom, doing the quality check of the delivery in the classroom using tech. And today we have cloud technology and you guys are much better experts than me. You know, we have uh, machine learning, we have AI, there are a lot of big terms that even I don't understand. But there's so much that can be done with a live audience in a physical classroom, provided we can beam in and beam out of the class. And that's what Googling has been all about. I will just share a few slides uh, so that you get some visuals. Just give me a second here. So that's the whole solution that we have, a hybrid model, a smart classroom model, which combines the power of the online and the offline world to create the solution. I will skip the slides, which I've already talked about. Uh, three major components to a solution, um, completely vernacular content. So the content that we deliver in a classroom is built with the help of the local state board teachers who have been teaching that curriculum in that uh, vernacular language, in the language of the state board for the last 10, 15 years take it to the student in the form of a 4G enabled smart classroom at the rural grassroots block level. What you see on the screen is an actual picture of one of our classrooms. Um, this is a, what we call as a schooling grassroots center. Uh, this is based out of Bar. It's a small block, 80 kilometers from Patna city capital. Um, as you can see, it can accommodate a maximum of only 40 students. It's a two teacher environment. There's a expert teacher, which is a part of the pre-recorded video. And then there's a physical teacher in the classroom who's the interface between a solution and the students. And this physical teacher is, by the way, also an amazing youth. When we talk about this 85% uh, geography, there are a lot of educated youth who do not have a means of employment. Year on year, they keep trying for government jobs, uh, hoping to crack it one fine day. We engage with this youth. We take them through a selection process. We take them through a training program. And then in their local geography, in their native place, we set up these grassroots centers and enable them to be then able to deliver a solution to our students. As we speak, we have 25 such classrooms across four states, UP, MP, Bihar, and Jharkhand. What has been amazing for us is the results of our students over the last three years. I talked about the mom and pop tuition centers. It's only fair that I also talk about us. We have had 100% pass rate for a student in the last three years. On an average, while the state board sees 50% of its students getting third division or failing, our students have consistently scored 92, 93% in subjects like math, science, and social studies. And 90 plus percent of our students secure first division while the remaining secure a second division. Most notably last year, one of our students scored an eighth rank in the state of Bihar, which was an amazing uh, achievement for us as well. What we've done in the pandemic lockdown period, we've also launched our app, the same app that we use in our classrooms. Uh, we have put it on the Play Store. It's on a freemium model. Uh, it is for those students and those regions where we do not have our centers as of today. This was launched on 16th of Feb. And within 15 days, we saw 1 lakh plus downloads of the app. In the last seven, eight months, we have seen 6 lakh downloads of the app. 
and what is more interesting is that we have been getting calls from students from different states asking us when the content for their vernacular state board will be available on the app you had thousands of students calling us asking us for arts and commerce solution because initially we were doing only maths and science uh, we have built that we have also deployed a solution in uh, schools uh, i talked about the apathy of schools we are also partnering with schools to fill that gap uh, we have been working with some very forward looking district administrations uh, the anupur district which by the way is again an iit kanpur alumni uh, mr chandmohan thakur an iit kanpur 2006 btech and an is officer Uh, we worked with him very closely and we deployed a solution in 50 of his schools in anupur district this is on mp chatisgarh border it's a tribal belt 7 and 1/2 lakh population and we also deployed this in 20 schools in gaya district and when we did this at, a, at the school level the question for us was whether school teachers would adopt a solution uh, given that the various uh, limitations that might be there but we saw an amazing results in mpbsc 2020 exams um, these 50 schools did an average 10 and a half percent improvement in their pass rate the best performance was by one of the schools whose pass percentage went up from 19% to 89.36% the district also applied for the coveted prime minister's award for excellence in public administration 2020 in the innovation general category and out of 958 nominations from 702 districts uh the schooling smart class project got the third position we were among the finalists and most recently the project also got the scotch award uh, for technology which was an amazing validation of our uh, solution now we have grown forward we are now even doing vocational courses at the centers now this is a 4g enabled classroom which can beam in and beam out uh, so we have been teaching the students python programming we have been taking them through spoken english classes Uh, we have been conducting live tests just like gre gmat the questions appear and students take those tests uh, we have worked on clicker technology to enable the students in the classroom a huge audience out there that we are working with in the last 3 years a lot of iit can uh, alumni have uh, become a part of schooling and they have invested with us as our angel investors and they are helping us grow i will not go through each of the names but people from iit kanpur from iit delhi iit roorkee iit kharagpur iit chennai and beyond have participated with us and have brought us here and from here we believe that this is just the starting point for us we now look to grow from 25 centers to 250 centers to 1000 centers to 5000 centers across the length and breadth of india and beyond um so with that i i would like to open up to questions uh, from all of you yeah thanks uh, himanshu can i play a video because previously we were not able to play the video so i have downloaded from youtube and we can play uh, that video what which you provided us okay. sure so everybody would get a glimpse of it yeah yeah, yeah sure so uh, is screen is visible uh, yes it is visible yes sir aap padhai mein sound is it fine yes sir ha yes it is good okay yes. okay schooling grassroots center hai naye zamane ka smart coaching center जो करेगा आपके पढ़ाई में मदद स्मार्ट क्लास टेक्नोलॉजी और एक्सपर्ट फैकल्टी के साथ स्टेट बोर्ड एवं सीबीएसई के स्टूडेंट के लिए कठिन से कठिन कॉन्सेप्ट को सरल बनाया जाता है हमारे क्लास रूट सेंटर पर हमारे द्वारा चयनित एक्सपर्ट टीचर सभी विषयों की पढ़ाई अभ्यास प्रश्न क्लास टेस्ट तथा आपके डाउट का समाधान करवाते हैं ग्रास रूट सेंटर ज्वाइन करने से पहले आप यहां पर एक हफ्ते का डेमो क्लास मुफ्त में कर सकते हैं ग्रास रूट सेंटर ज्वाइन करने पर आपको मिलता है पाठ्यचर्य या करिकुलम ऐप का सब्सक्रिप्शन वो भी बिल्कुल मुफ्त ऐप के माध्यम से आप 
कभी भी कहीं से भी सीधे अपने क्लास से जुड़ सकते हैं ग्रास रूट सेंटर पर चलने वाले डेरी क्विज के माध्यम से आप अपनी बौद्धिक क्षमता को और भी विकसित कर सकते हैं अपने कोर्स की पढ़ाई के साथ ही आप स्पोकन इंग्लिश कंप्यूटर आदि जैसे अन्य सब्जेक्ट्स भी सीख सकते हैं भारत के पच्चीस जिलों में हमारे सेंटर्स चल रहे हैं पिछले तीन साल ऐसी हमारे सौ बच्चे अपने बोर्ड एग्जाम्स में पास कर रहे हैं एवं स्टेट बोर्ड एग्जाम्स में टॉप टेन रैंक में सक्षम रहे हैं हम आपको ग्रास रूट बार्ड सेंटर पर डेमो के लिए आमंत्रित करते हैं हमारा पता है हाउस ऑफ श्री रवि भूषण प्रसाद स्टेशन रोड ऑपोजिट एच बैंक बार्ड बिहार अधिक जानकारी के लिए हमें छह दो शून्य तीन नौ छ आठ छह शून्य दो या शून्य तीन या शून्य चार या कॉल करें है सरल ओके या थैंक यू या सो दिस इज अ स्मॉल प्रोमो वीडियो दैट वी व्हेन वी विजिट स्कूल्स वी शो टू द स्टूडेंट्स इनवाइट देम टू कम इन टू अ सेंटर्स एंड इट्स फ्री ऑफ कॉस्ट फॉर अ वीक एंड दैट्स वेयर द स्टोरी बिगिंस यस सो आई एम ओपन टू क्वेश्चंस आई थिंक समबडी हैड रेज्ड अ हैंड यस सूरज सूरज hi himan so first of all thanks so very much for this talk and particularly the works which you are doing uh, i have some few questions actually and uh, uh, i wanted actually to get your suggestions over those so uh, so i'll ask my question but first i'll give my background why am i asking the question you'll understand it better okay so i am my name is suraj kumar uh, i'm uh, working in the brain sciences department okay i work on the neural basis of reading and writing processes okay i research, i do my research on that this year 2022 august i'll be going to the us for my phd okay and uh, i am from one of those schools which you just described that you visited in gaya and other places so i am i actually kind of was edu- educated at those places etc so there are real problems there i understand and everything after my phd my actually one of my dreams uh, is to come here in india and do uh, work on that but not on the samples which you are describing here whatever you showed is actually advanced level meaning it's uchchatar madhyamik or uchch madhyamik right i am more focused towards primary levels the very very basic levels i have my reasons for that so my question is that after 5 years let's say in 2026 or 27 that's i'll be coming here back again and working in those areas and my problem by the way and focus is not entire india at all i'm not i am not concerned about the india even not the bihar i'm just concerned about one district okay my district where i'm com- coming from so what are some of the challenges which you think as per your experiences i will be uh, facing in that year actually okay uh, and like what are the things which i should kind of prepare myself along this uh, years to come that okay these are the things which i should be more informed about and having my things getting done ahead of time right uh, congratulations suraj on your uh, phd okay. um, the district can i get the name where you belong to or where you want to bring this so to? where i am from it's near to nepal it's called the sitamarhi district you might have heard about, <laughs> about that yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a center in sitamarhi as well which place uh, uh, in proper sitamarhi Okay. Yeah, yeah. We just started it after the pandemic. This year, it's pretty new. Um, I, yeah. So coming back to your question, so brilliant, right? Uh, I think in five years from now, a lot of this will become mainstream. There will be more acceptance for such things. Uh, primary years is definitely the key area to focus on. Uh, while we are focused on the yes, like you said, eighth and beyond, uh, we have created a primary content, but it's it needs. probably needs a guy like you who really understands the child before we even go into that space because it's not just tutoring right yes the uh, the adaptive skills of the students at that age the so much that can be done we say a child can learn 14 languages uh, at, at an early age if it is exposed to right um so yeah amazing um challenges i think the only the first biggest challenge is the adaptability of people to something new because they are used to the way of things that have always been there 
um, but since you have a five year margin, I think a lot of that will change. A lot of this smart class and technology and you know in classroom digital. Maybe even five years from now, every school will be digitized in India. Hopefully, uh, the NEP mission, right? Um, then the adaptability of that should come in. Um, the challenge more will be from your end that you would have to give up a brighter career. At I won't career. give up. A, like I will use that career actually to do things here. Uh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, I mean, you ready to, yeah. then the second thing you should do, one is the adaptability of your consumer base. See, we might have a lot of good ideas, but um, finally, uh, you know, it is the student who has to be ready. And if I may digress a bit, uh, I will just tell you all the story of the parrot quickly in short. Um, so there was a king and one day and he was a very famous king, very big king. And one day he finally decided that I want to keep a pet. And then he thought which pet to keep. So he said, I'll keep a parrot uh, and that will make me happy. So he called the conference of all his mantris and uh, all his ministers. And he said, I want to you know, keep a parrot. And everybody said, yes, I'm king, amazing. And then the, the best constructor and the constructor workers of his uh, empire came and they said, no, no, don't keep him just like that in a cage. We'll make a big palace for him. So they built a palace. Then the gardeners came, they said, we'll build beautiful gardens. Then the tree planters came, they said, we'll build uh, amazing fruit trees for the, and all fanfare and everything happened. And, uh, you know, one year down the line, there was a D-Day came and he said, okay, now we will, uh, you know, inaugurate the whole thing. And so the, and I'm really cutting it short uh, because we have limited time. The, everybody from his kingdom came and the king went and did the ribbon cutting and everybody clapped and sweets were distributed. And then, and then something went wrong. What do you guys think uh, went wrong in the entire story so far? Quickly, you guys are the brightest minds. There was no parrot. There was no parrot. Everybody forgot the parrot, right? So, um, and, and, and this is, I mean, whichever field you guys may go to and whatever startups you may do, right? Your customer is the parrot. So don't forget the parrot. So yes, yeah, so the student has to be ready for a solution um, first. And second is, of course, Suraj, um, since you come from the humble background, it should be easy for you. But yeah, you will have to do it ground up. You will have to probably move in there and then build it from just there. Otherwise, I don't see any question. Challenge. Just one yeah. quick question. I don't want to like take time too very much and like um, make feel people uh, irritated, etc. So my quick question was that uh, one of the things which, uh, which is great about your work is that it's the hybrid model. It's not like online or completely offline model. This is very nice. I mean, this is very nice. So two things which I see one of the most uh, kind of most important problems. First is nutrition itself. Okay, at the primary level, let's say I'm talking about those people who have hundred rupees uh, income in like some in a week. So those are not my customers actually. Those are the people who are in the need of real help, basic help. Okay, so so who will give them that? Uh, let's say the smartphone funding for that and nutrition. What do you think might be? Uh, my options to look for because I'm going to the country which is the richest in this entire globe right now. Okay, I might be able to get into touch with people. I don't know, like, and do something about that. <clears throat> do you think there is this way, uh, any way? I mean, see, nutrition is a problem that government is solving very beautifully. I think uh, that I disagree. Not... No, no. I'll tell you one thing. One of the things uh, about in your slides, you know, the schools you you showed, no, it actually looks. I would say some thousand times worse than that. The real, real India is actually much worse than what, whatever is shown here. Okay, it's not that classy and shiny and with everything and like enclosed walls. There are schools in which there are no boundaries even. Yes, you want I, have, so, I have yeah. visited those schools. The schools that I showed are the classrooms that happened after we set up our structure in those classrooms. Those are the smart classrooms that you saw. Um, Nutrition is probably something that I'm not the expert on, but uh, smartphone also, I don't believe is really required. Uh, the hybrid model and you will have such establishments available. You're more than welcome to you know, whatever infrastructure support that you need, uh, we'll be more than happy to provide you. Of course, five years down the line is a, a yeah, big gap, but we can definitely look at uh, you know helping it out in whichever way we can. Thank you so very much for the talk. And I'm done just one quick uh, nice point about-
much please yeah let, let okay. others let others yeah, I think also uh, raise uh, Atanu, because... has a question there's another yeah. hand raised yeah. Yeah. I think Himanshu has already sparked a lot of interest and uh, it's been really really nice uh, I want to tell the audience that we at Unan Bharat Abhiyan uh, are working in the villages and we are going to work with uh, schooling very closely and take that model because we do see uh, virtue of it. Uh, one uh, very good thing is that you're just one of the few uh, who are working in uh, Hindi and, uh, and the videos that you have, I mean, the, the rural kids are able to connect to it. So, so that's the big benefit of it and the hybrid model. In fact, uh, we have already taken inspiration from your hybrid model. So our uh, SMO course that we are running, which is the sewing machine operator course, uh, we have online classes and we also put an assistant teacher on job and uh, you know, who's physically present. And, and we see that it really works well. Uh, so, you know, some very good quality lectures uh, combined with the physical presence of a teacher who is probably C grade, you know, that combination works very well. So, uh, looking forward to that, I see some more questions coming. Uh, Atanu. It's Atanu Ghosh. Yeah, is the next. Yeah. Question. So, Atanu. yeah. Good afternoon. And Himanshu, I got thoroughly impressed, uh, you know, with your thoughts. Being an IT graduate, you know, and in CSC department. You could have looked for your, you know, huge packages, but uh, you know the, what you are doing, really something which uh, very impressive and very inspiring for many. To Can I request Vijay to please mute your uh, your mic? Others are not being able to hear. Uh, so, no, please go on. So this is very inspiring for others also to follow. You know, if there are a few more Mangshu, I think the whole. Uh, a complexion may change for this country as a whole, you know. So I really appreciate what you're doing. I've got one small query. I was just wondering that what is the kind of business model? I mean, because I'm looking at the economic viability of any such initiatives taken by any students anywhere in future. So I thought if you throw some light on the economic viability, well, finally, you know, one has to survive. Yes. So how right. that happens. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for the kind words there. Yes, I had purposely removed the economic slides from the presentation. Uh, but yes, we are a completely for profitable organization. We look to be a billion dollar organization. In fact, as we speak, we are looking at raising our Series A fund. Uh, and in the past, we have raised close to a $1.2 million fund. And that happens only when it is uh, commercially a profitable proposition. Um, and that's how we want to be. And that's how we believe that uh, everybody in the system should also make money while not taxing the child or raising the unit economics of the or the cost of it itself. Uh, specifically to your question, uh, we charge our students uh, 300 to 500 rupees a month when they join our centers, which is at par with the fees being charged in the same uh, rural geographies. Um, a ninth or a tenth grader pays us 300 rupees, a student in 11th or 12th pays us 400 rupees. Um, and the app it works on a freemium model. It's free for 21 days. And then we charge 99 rupees a month. Um, so while we have kept it low and the unit economics itself is huge. I had skipped that slide, but if you just look at the numbers, 265 million K-12 students, if we take 85% of them, that's 225 million students. If each student is paying 300 rupees a month tuition fees to mom and pop tuition centers, if you do the maths, uh, 225 million into 300 into 12, that's $10.8 billion revenue being generated annually going to mom and pop tuition center. And this is just kindergarten to K-12. We are not even talking about competitive exams and beyond, which is even costlier. And if we just capture 10% of that market space, uh, we are talking about schooling doing $1 billion revenue. So that's the commerce. Uh, I hope I have answered your question. Uh, just, just one query, I just want to add on. Uh, I'm looking at also the break-even point. So at what number, you know, you'll be able to at least yeah. break-even. Yeah. So yeah, our break-even works at each center. So typically the, these uh, centers are in locations where the rental is pretty low, anywhere between 3,000 to 10,000 rupees a month. 10,000 is our limit. 
and then the teacher salary the internet cost the cost of electricity fresh clean water that we provide to our students um so our cost is uh, roughly at uh, our fixed cost of operations is between 25 to 30000 rupees a month per center so at uh, 100 students to a center we are comfortably at a break even 100 students paying 300 rupees a month great thank you so much great thank you thanks himanshu um i would like to add here atnu was saying if if there were more himanshu so i think uh, uh there could be more ratanu as well just not be himanshu because uh, good things cannot just happen by one guy standing the, behind himanshu there are so many uh, people who is standing to support him and i think we definitely but i just correct it actually himanshu can be only one right but there to be replica of himanshu that could mean shikhar also <laughs> i will not go into that philosophical mode right now <laughs> but we could talk about that on another occasion um yeah i think uh, so himanshu we have another question from krishna sure hello sir hi am i audible yeah krishna go ahead yes sir uh, sir uh, right now we are just uh, talking about the schooling app and uh, we are like uh, connecting the student with the hybrid mode so in some of the area uh, generally we are uh, targeting the rural area right so in some of area uh, we will find that student uh, students uh, do not have any uh, smartphone kind of thing we can like only teach in the school hours like 9 to 5 or whatever the slots will be there so how would like how will we address these we are like supporting through that kind of uh, smartphone or like how we are connecting them thanks uh, after the class like 9 to after yes. 9 to 5 yes i got your question krishna so the model that i described uh, we have three product solutions one solution is the app which requires a child to have a smartphone which as i said is a very limited uh, product line the second solution we have is a smart school solution where we engage with existing schools to deploy that solution so yes that the student can take advantage only during the school hours and then the third line which is our main product line is the schooling grassroots centers we run these as uh, smart classroom uh, in very layman term smart tuition centers before school and after school so students come into these centers as early as 6 am in the morning and they can study in our batches and then go to school and then after school they can come back and join the batches and our centers run till uh, as late as 7 7:30 in the evening uh, keeping the child safety in mind Okay. that answers your yes. question krishnan yes uh, i got uh, my answer sir uh, like uh, since we are doing with the collaboration of school so uh, maybe there could be some differences between like how the students we are connecting some student uh, some schools running after like 9 some students uh, started like 7 am so how we are like synchronize student this will be also problem i think yes so different schools have different timings yes uh, that is very prevalent um, in the india that we are part of and that's where we have uh, different batches as i said through the day so we may have a grade 10th batch in the morning 7 to 8 am and then we may have another batch of uh, grade 10th same subjects in the evening and the students can choose uh, uh, whichever wish you know, they wish to join um, totally depends on the student strength uh, that wants to come in at a center Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Krishna. Do Do we have more questions from the audience? Um, Himanshu, I have a, a question for for me as well. So, uh, we have discussed about this on previous occasion. I think uh, this is also meant for the younger generation to understand. Is like if education is going to be a big thing in coming years. so if somebody is thinking along those direction they may be motivated to uplift their you know villages that they come from we all of us have a story one or the other so what should be their direction like what people need to understand before they seriously think about education as you were saying that the parrot was missing so what they should make sure that this is what i need to do and then other things will build upon it and then make it a great right um 
I think in the investor term, it's called the product market fit. In my story, it's called the parrot. But uh, what you have to just think about is the, is the solution that you have in mind. Will somebody be ready to pay for it? I think that's the litmus paper test. Uh, because when you give it as a freebie, yeah, there might be few people who come in. But can you eventually make it a, a profitable business? Unless you're planning an NGO, which is also okay. Um, and I would add to that uh, what you said that Education will become hot. No, education has always been hot. It has <laughs> always been a big sector. And I think it will always be education, health, agriculture, and employment yeah. uh, will always be good places to s- solve newer challenges, to uh, solve newer problems. Yeah, but specific to your question, I think, yeah. Well, whatever we design, because a lot of things can be designed in the mind. Uh, a paying customer is the, is the test. <laughs> And the benefit. Just think of it. If I stop what I'm doing today, will somebody miss it tomorrow? It applies to human beings. It also applies to whatever startup ideas we may have. Yeah, very nicely put. Uh, is there any other question from the audience that we could take? Okay. Um, I think uh, the contact of uh, Himanshu was already shared also. Uh, perhaps emails and phone number if there are um, any interest uh, at any level i hope uh, himanshu will be able to entertain those questions in a in a, on a different platform or on personal basis um, i think that was all from our end uh, rita ma'am do you want to add something no we really look forward to having himanshu and his moving to come to back <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Manchi. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you ma'am. Um, thank you to Unnat Bharat for giving me this platform. I would love to engage with uh, all of you. Uh, feel free to ping me and get in touch with me and see if you would like to take interest. And yes, I am really looking forward uh, to getting this thing started at IIT Kanpur. Uh, and hopefully we roll it out ASAP. Thank you. All the best to you, I'm sure. Very impressive. I really got impressed. Keep it up. Great way, keep it up. Thank you. Thank you.